Are you in the Atlanta, Georgia area? Are you looking to check out some live, awesome music during the week? They have Kino, poker tournaments, horseshoes, and special events. It's all at the Moon Shadow Tavern. That's at 3976 Lawrenceville Highway in Tucker, Georgia. That's the Moon Shadow Tavern. Give them a call, 770-674-2133. Check out their selection of great food, friendly service. Visit their website at msttucker.com. That's www.msttucker.com. Moon Shadow Tavern is a proud sponsor of the Chris Massey Web TV Music Show on www.americanheartsradio.com Make sure you told them that American Hearts Radio sent you. Visit their website, check out their great selection of food, appetizers, wings, burgers, sandwiches and wraps, steaks and chicken, salads and sides. Also their drink specials. Live music during the week. Check them out. Give them a call. 770-674-2133 Fishing had nothing better to do. Wouldn't have to bury the old dog, and I sure would miss him too. Well, out of the water come that bass again, and grabbed me by the leg and pulled me in. We were sinking to the depths of that fishing hole. I was beating him in the head with my fishing pole. Well, I broke loose and was swimming free, and the bass came up underneath and bit me on the knee. I let out a cry to the fishing god. I said, "Listen, whoo! Listen what I say. I'll never lie again about that big one that got away." The big bass. Um, we're going to start this thing off. I don't know how it's going to end up. Some of y'all might just run out of the damn room screaming and hollering. I might. According to the hot sauce, I was just eating some chicken gizzards and the guy put out in front of me and had to slam on the brakes. And I didn't spill my gizzards. But I spilled some hot sauce. Hey, um, I don't know how this thing is. It, can you see the picture? Is it looking all right? Yeah. Okay, good. Not see, like, oh, that good enough, but, um, be excited, be happy, point at the camera, look at the camera, and tell everybody thank you for tuning in to my first episode. It's oh, Gene yeah, Odom. Yeah. Thank you. You want me to move out of the way so I won't We're be American distracted? American Hearts Radio. Yeah, you're all right. Okay. Uh, Act like you. You're getting something to look at. Yeah. <laughs> and you can bounce off Bruce, too. Mention Bruce, say I got Bruce here with me at the American Arts Radio and Who show is this mine or yours? It's yours. Okay. <laughs> I love this game. <laughs> <laughs> you get I'm it, me. I'm gonna tell you like Ryan told one night, you know. We was up there, I thought the stage right, the stage left, which one was and uh, uh a guy jumped on there and you know, and Ronnie stepped back. You know, you could no Ryan with no shoes or anything. Ryan Ryan stepped back and I got the guy. And Ryan looked at him and Ryan said, man, get your own gig. This is my gig. And I said, that's right, buddy. I said, get your own gig. And I came off the stage. But, uh, um, where was I? I got confused. Um, oh, yeah, thanks for tuning in to my first, this is Radio TV. Oh, Web TV. Oh, Web TV. American Hearts Radio. And, um, 
I don't know about y'all, but I'm going to have a good time. And as long as the Cokes last, if the Cokes run out, I'm gone. But um, I don't know how to start this thing off, any kind of questions or whatever, what we're going to talk about, talk about fishing or whatever, but um, uh, my daughter put the picture on Facebook last night, they live over outside of Tulsa, and they over, they got a cabin thing over there in Missouri River outside that, south of Branson, or north of Branson, south of Branson, I guess. A whole boatload of trout. God, I wish I was out there. And they must have had 15 or 20 nice trout, rainbow trout, they caught that river. I can't think of the name of the river. But um, I wish I was fishing. But I'm sitting here in front of this camera trying to figure out what to say, how, what to talk about. But I wish you people could ask me some questions. Maybe on the next one we'll have a, something set up and you know, ask me some questions. Um, let's see, I also want to mention about Scott and Hill that contacted me about goat cut bones and chicken bone. But Scott Hill contacted me about, uh, excuse me, that coach got giving gas, um, helping Jimmy Vans in out with a benefit for Jimmy, and uh, we're doing a benefit August the 16th, and we're all y'all to be here. Man, if y'all can't make it, you can make a donation to that uh, Freedom, Freedom, Jimmy Van Zandt, Freedom for Life. Um, make a, a, a donation to help Jimmy out. He needs his liver worked on, liver transplant. And um, I decided to help Scott out with this thing, and uh, we're going to turn it into a nice thing for Jimmy on August the 16th. I've got quite a few bands going to be there. What's up, bands from uh, State Line Mob coming from Alabama? up there at Muscle Shoals. Um, and they're coming to be this Jimmy Van Zandt benefit thing and um, pronounced Skinner Tribute Band, very good Skinner Tribute Band. And they, they are a bit, one of the best Skinner Tribute Bands I've ever seen. They're gonna be there, several other bands, Natural Instincts Band. But anyway, we're gonna put on a good show for Jimmy, help Jimmy get some money to go toward his uh, liver transplant thing with Jim. And uh, I hate it, but uh, if you do that old crazy drinking and other stuff, and uh, when you're young, the older you get, it'll catch up with you. And if you do too much of it, it'll hit you upside the head, and your liver will go south on you. If these cokes would have killed anybody, I've been dead 70 years, well, 60 years ago. <laughs> but uh, they hadn't got no uh, liver problems drinking cokes. Oh, uh, yeah. So well, y'all, we're looking forward to putting that thing on for Jimmy and doing a good job for him, Scott Hill, and these other people, Natural Instincts, and pronounced the State Line Mob, and uh, on Tur Kurt Town's supposed to be there, and, and uh, several other people going to show up. And I tell you, Jimmy said he might be in town. He, him and his wife, G, will come out there for G, Z or G, whatever you want to call it. It's her. I think it's Z, Z, Z with a Z, and not Z with a G. But, um, and Donnie and Johnny, if they're in town, they'll probably drop by. You can't advertise that Donnie and Johnny would do something like that because they're under contract and they have to be, you know, um, with the band. And, and so they'll probably show up if, if they're in town. Donnie and Johnny, good people, good folks. And I'm 175% sure that Donnie and Johnny has made a substantial donation to the foundation to help Jimmy. Um, because he's a Van Zandt, he's a family, he, he's a family. And if you've known the Van Zandt people, folks, family, as long as I have, you know their family, they're all, they're all family. And they, they'll help somebody that needs it. And uh, some of the old Van Zandt's will help you get your ass whipped if you needed it too, so it might be right there on top of it if you, if you, if you needed it. But um, I'm looking forward to doing that thing for Jimmy and this first 25 minute gig thing I'm doing here. 25 minutes gonna go fast, so I'm really just warming up and to see how my look, fade, how, how my talk and how everything comes out so I can learn from this first one and make the second one better. And I don't know how 
fast that they're going to do another one of these things, but the next time I'll have something else to talk about, jokes and fishing or whatever. I'm going to go up on PD catching them 75 to 80, 100 pound of catfish probably next week and uh, rest all them things and try to get in, in the boat. You catch a 75 to 80 pound of catfish on a jug, he can turn your boat over and uh, if you don't knock him in the head first or get him in the boat and rest him down, but uh, there's a catfish up there that will turn your boat over. And um, um, if you're going to talk fishing, that'll be okay. But uh, I'm going to have some other stories. Well, I got one I'll tell you about too. Uh, all you NASCAR people out there, uh, I see Jimmy Johnson won that thing and I want to have my book with me so I can verify everything. But I'm going to tell you all about a fellow that me and Ronnie Van Zandt grew up with right down the road. Leroy Yarber, and uh, me and Ronnie used to run down that old dirt track with him back at our 55 ship, he's number six. Beat you to death on dirt track. But um, <coughs> Leroy went, left here and went up and started racing for uh, Larry Shankle and uh, Ray Fox and them up there in uh, Charlotte, Rockingham. And Leroy was the first person to ever win the Triple Crown. Southern 500, five, the Daytona 500, and the Firecracker 400. That was called the Triple Crown. Leroy was the first person, only two people's ever won the Triple Crown. Leroy had been the one, and I think Bill Elliott might, Bill Elliott might have been number two, but there was only two people that ever won the Triple Crown. Anyway, Leroy come right down the street. And, uh, 1960. 1965. He left about 63 or 4 to go up there to North Carolina. It was 65. Some of you NASCAR fans, I'm going to teach you something about the West Side. Um, Chrysler sent Leroy, I think it was Ray Fox also, 1965 Dodge Carnet, 426 Hemi. Leroy and I think it was Ray Fox, put a blower, a handmade blower on that 426 Hemi and a fuel injection system on it, handmade, and some drag, drag, drag strip techniques to that thing. And Leroy got it there on Daytona 500, Daytona International Raceway, with them old tires in 1965 on the back of that front of that car, which wasn't no sticky tires like they drive today. And Leroy over, open that thing up, come around out, you know, it's ain't no hearsay. I was there. And Leroy come around there. And they clocked him at 240 miles an hour. When he come out of the second turn on the back stretch, he started smoking the tires. He smoked the tires for about halfway around it. They started smoking the tires. They thought he blew the engine so they threw the caution light on. So down the back stretch, Leroy, Leroy let off of the car, coasted across the finish line, still clocked him at 180 something mile an hour in 1965. And Leroy got wide open. He didn't run in there and let off like the most sticky tires and like that get the guys never run up there and get Louis tires and sticky and made a turn. Leroy going in there 200 mile an hour in 1965. Uh, and uh, but there was a horrible story about him when he got injured and some other stuff. I'll tell you about that and his good buddy Junior Johnson. And uh, um, I, I, when I have my when I have my, the book, I can verify everything I'm saying. I'll, I'll tell you more about that. Or y'all can email and ask ask questions about that. Leroy Yarbo would, would have been probably the greatest race car driver of all time if he hadn't had those accidents and got out of it and you know, got bit by a tick. That was the downfall. And, uh, well, we, we got more time? We still have time left? We got three minutes. Three minutes. We got three minutes, so I'm getting wrong. Uh, were we going to 25 or 15? Uh, I, I thought you said 25. Oh, well, okay, then, then well, you got, uh, something like that. 14 minutes. 14 minutes, okay. No, no, 14. Uh, yeah, 13 minutes. 
13 minutes, okay. You want to go to a commercial break? Uh, we can, and I think it's something else. Yep, good tell. We'll be right back. We're going to go to a commercial break. We're going to a commercial here's, break? Here's a video about Jimmy Van Zandt. And uh, I'll tell you like Rush Limbaugh does. Says, we're taking an obscene commercial break. Obscene, what is that commercial? Obscene. An obscene profit break. Uh, and we'll be right back. Hi, thank you for choosing the Guitar Station. We've been here for 10 years. We started our 11th year in historic downtown Green Coast Springs on 421 Walnut Street. We do guitar lessons. We do repairs, consignments. We do a lot of stuff. We do guitar, bass, drums, keyboards, mandolin, ukulele, banjo. We do a lot of instruments. But mainly, we have fun at the Guitar Station, all ages, 8 to 80. So stop by, give us a call at 284. 5191, that's 904 284 5191. We love music, so we want to share that with you. Thank you so much, and God bless. Have a great day. Hi, my name's Kurt Town, and I'm in the Kurt Town Band. I've had a lot of people ask me over the years to do a radio show or a web show, and I thought this might be kind of cool. I was approached by America Hearts Radio, and, uh, and I thought, what a cool opportunity to bring some friends together and uh, some national acts, international acts, some locals, uh, guys we love jamming with and playing with, and just some cool inter you know, entertainment-based stuff, maybe art, whatnot. But anyway, I wanted to know what you thought about that. Is that something you would like for me to do? Is that something you would share on Facebook? Is that something you would share in whatever media form you'd like to? And, uh, and if that's something you would like me to do, then make a comment on our Facebook page and let me know. So I'll entertain the idea. But it would be cool. We'll play maybe some acoustic stuff with my band, have some other bands come in, maybe like West Brooks or, you know, the Ivy West Band or, or something along that nature. And uh, just have a good old time and uh, enjoy the, the music and and our musical heritage and just have a have a good time show off a little bit of uh, talent from the west side and of Jacksonville Florida and not necessarily contain it to the west side although that is as you know the best side so anyway join us at America Hearts Radio thank you so much and God bless I'm with a shotgun in my Hi, my name is Mike Aloya. I'm with American Hearts Radio, Entertainment Network, bringing the hearts of America together. Go to our website, www.americanheartsradio.com, and click on the Gift of Life Benefit Concert for Mr. Jimmy Van Zandt. He needs a liver transplant, and uh, we're going to do everything in our power to spread the word, to try to get the money up for this man. Jimmy Van Zandt comes from a musical family. He's a national singer and songwriter, well known in the music world. For over 40 years, Jimmy and his wife Zora and his family have been committed to using their musical talents to help many charities, fundraising campaigns. He's dedicated to his fans and he never gives less than his all. When he's on stage, he's the best, man, and he really, really he puts his heart and soul in his music, and uh, now he needs your help. Recently, Jimmy was diagnosed with liver cancer, and his doctors at Vanderbilt Medical Center have told him he will need a life-saving liver transplant very soon. However, transplantation is enormously expensive, according to the transplant living total cost of the liver transplant, including, including the pre-transplant expenses everything we're looking at medications in a lifetime five hundred seventy five thousand dollars now that's a lot of money and it's a heck of a price tag to put on somebody's life but here at american hearts radio entertainment network are bound and determined and driven by faith and by our lord jesus and my father god to help this man so go to our website Click on Gift of Life Benefit Concert from Jimmy Van Zandt, and I'll get back to you with those dates when everything's locked in. My name's Mike Aloya. Thank you for becoming a listener, a viewer, and a supporter. 
of our network. God bless you. Rock and roll. Also, you can go to uh, www.m.healthhopelive.org, uh, campaign 452, 4 question mark, 3.0.650. I want to repeat that again. It's www.m.healthhopelive.org, backslash campaign, backslash 452, 4 question mark, 3.0.650. And that you can go directly to there. Or just go to our website, click on the banners uh, to help Jimmy Van Zant in his liver transplant. Hey, I'm sitting here at, uh, at uh, American Hearts Radio. And for you folks that have broken hearts, this is the radio to listen to. I'm going to try to listen to it. And uh, I'm doing a shout out for the benefit show we're doing for Jimmy Van Zant that needs a liver. His liver's in bad shape. And we're going to uh, do it at the National Guard Armory, Normandy Boulevard, 9900, Normandy Boulevard. August the 16th, that's a Saturday. For all you people that work all week long, off on Saturday, bring your pocketbooks. Um, so the doors open about six, 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 six and uh, the first act, we're going to have a lot of acts playing there, a lot of bands, a lot of people, it starts at seven. Uh, uh, this guy, totally confused him now. <laughs> um, and it goes from six to eleven, and we're going to have a great time. BYOB, bring your own bottle, and um, the, the cost is twenty dollars, and if you're family, you think you're getting in free, nah, twenty dollars. Family, if you bring your dog, it's 20 more dollars. So y'all come on out for a good good show for Jimmy Van Zandt, and we're going to have some great entertainment. we got them on the phone now trying to book their flights to come in, so at a later date we'll have the name of who all, but y'all show up, it's going to be great. $20. Cash. Tell them who you are. Oh, I'm Gene Odom, if you don't recognize me. <laughs> <laughs> I think you everybody. Yeah, but um, <laughs> I'm what's left of Gene Odom, and anybody in the rock and roll business knows me, especially if you're messing around Southern Rock. Our old country. Not this new country trash, but old country. Hey, we're back. Are we back? <laughs> okay, we're back. Um, but I'm gonna um, maybe go ahead and finish this Leroy thing out. Uh, anyway, Leroy Yarber was wide open. I mean, he floorboarded it and he was around. If he got out front, you couldn't catch him. And uh, I think it was 69, because I was overseas in the Army. He, Darlington, he wrecked Darlington. He wrecked and just smashed up cars because he was wide open. He didn't cut it and go into the turn. He didn't allow the gas. He, he floorboarded that thing. And um, he did the Indianapolis or in Indianapolis and he wrecked at Indianapolis a couple hundred miles an hour, busted his head real bad and they put a plate in his head. And but he, right after he won the uh, Daytona, Daytona 500, of course he, I think he won a hundred thousand dollars, something, wasn't no million dollars like they make nowadays, but anyway he took, took his whole crew out, got them all dinner and got them half drunk and took them all out to the cat houses up there in North Carolina. They all went to the cat houses. And uh, he uh, he went camping, and he got bit by a tick. No big deal. But the tick gave him turned into Rocky Mountain spotted fever, and they misdiagnosed. It. They never caught on to what it was. They thought it was the Rex, him hitting Darlington so many times at Darlington and pounding and getting head injuries and being unconscious and concussions over and over again and he started having problems 
uh, he couldn't get a ride and he, he wrecked and uh, he didn't know people and he couldn't remember things and uh, Junior Johnson t it took Leroy t several times to get him help, hospitals, whatever. And by the time they've diagnosed what had wrong, Junior Johnson had spent a quarter of a million dollars trying to get Leroy help. And um, he was diagnosed with the Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever. And by that time, it had drove him insane because if it's not diagnosed, it drives you crazy. If you're already crazy, you don't have far to go. But if you're not crazy, the Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever misdiagnosed will cause you um, uh, uh, severe injuries in the brain. And so Leroy, they, it was too late. He was, it was, he was already insane. And he uh, come back down here and lived with his mother and relatives back and forth. And he was institutionalized back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And uh, he, uh, I saw him, I think it was 84, walking down the very ditches that I used to walk in, picking up cold bottles when I used to wait the morning for the rooster crow, picking up soda bottles. That was Gene Odom. And I seen Leroy doing that, and he had bottles in his pocket and some cup beer cans and bottles. And so I stopped, and I said, Leroy. And he looked at me, he was Gene. And the first thing that insane man said was, man, I'm so sorry about our friend Ronnie. He said, I know about the plane crash I was in. He said, I am so sorry. I said, now, yes, yeah, it's horrible. So, how are you doing? He said, man, I'm trying to get me some drinking money. I pulled twenty dollars out of my pocket, and then I thought, I said, you know, I know his situation, so I put that back and I got five dollars, and I gave little boy five dollars to get himself something to drink with. And it wasn't, but a week or two later that he got into a squabble with his mother, and he was insane, and they put him back in the institution at McClinney, and I guess he had a seizure or something, and he fell, passed out, and hit his head and died on the floor of that mental institution. And Ronnie said there's only three people that ever made any kind of that name for itself coming out of Shantytown. It was Leroy Yarber, my brother Richard Odom, Red Odom, Junior Bullard, and I said, buddy, you guys, four of you. Leaving out Ronnie Vans in, he said, no, I'm not counting me. I said, well, I'm counting you. Leroy Yarber, Richard Odom, Red Odom, Junior Bullard, and Ronnie Van Zandt. And they're all dead. Well, Red's not, but he's about dead. Ronnie's dead, Leroy's dead, Richard's dead, Junior Bullard's dead. And uh, old brother, he's about 70, I guess he's about dead. You know, was still alive, but that's a hell of a Leroy Yarber story, and he would have been the biggest thing in NASCAR if he hadn't had so many wrecks, and that tick hadn't have been him. But to win, to be the first person to win the Triple Crown, that was our old buddy Leroy Yarber from right down the road. And if y'all contact these people and ask questions about that, I can get, there's a book, a magazine, with that article about Leroy. They did a, years ago, did an article about that. And I can verify everything I said. Mm. And uh, 240 mile an hour on Daytona 500, Daytona Speedway in 1965. So these guys nowadays couldn't do it. They couldn't do it on the street tires in 1965. Leroy Jordan was wild. It was truthfully, it was 280 mile an hour. But they, they, they document that they're proven when they could document they would think it was 240. Mm. But he was doing 280 mile an hour when he started smoking the tires because there was a guy with a, gun, a, 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 a radar gun or something. But you know, still, the facts is 240, and when he crossed the finish line coasting, 200, it was 200, 181 point something mile now, with the motor turned off, uh, one and, uh, two and a half turns away. And uh, sorry about this, go give me gas, but uh, it's good. Okay, how long we got? I another uh, six or seven minutes. Cool. And uh, when I come back again, when, when do you plan on doing another one of these? We'll do it once a week if you want. Oh, we, we'll wait to see what kind of reaction we get. If they people on here get disgusted, well, they're, they're get you disgusted. can throw up. You don't want to, I don't want to make them all sick, you know what I mean, if they, if they don't want to keep watching, you know. Gene, yeah. I just uh, had revamping your poster that uh, Gene Odom's old school web TV radio series 
storytelling, positive inspiration, and life. I'm telling you right here. B Y O B. Well, do you take a request, like a uh, question? C certainly, yeah. And I'll talk well, about Well, can you tell us how uh, how you fe felt emotionally? Uh, you're, you're a survivor of a plane crash, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. At the very moment when you realized that the plane was going to crash land, how did you feel? Well, I felt um, quite different than the rest of them because I, I knew something about weight and I knew something about force and I knew that it wasn't going to be good. but. It was the pilot, co-pilot. In their mind, at that time, and they put in all of our mind that we were going to make a belly landing. So in your mind, and you're sitting on the plane, and you're coming down, you're thinking that we're going to have a belly landing. And you've seen belly landing, you know, you know well, what to expect. And you're, but I was up and down, up and down, cussing them pilots out, running back and forth. And I knew that the plane weighed 68,000 pounds, and with the people in the luggage and the weight estimated about 75,000 pounds. So no matter what we were going to do, I knew we were going to be in trouble because 75,000 pounds hitting the ground, it, it's, it's not going to be, it's not going to be good. And so um, I went up and cussed them out one more time, and then I seen the plane lose its airspeed, and, they, and then it comes from a glide to a nosedive, 52 degrees. I saw that ground coming up quick, and Ronnie was asleep on the floor. I had to grab him and get him up quick, and got him up, shut him between Alan and Gary, and I was hollering, and the plane was, you know, he thought I was joking, because he took the sleeping pills, you know, and he said, man, come with you, I'm like, Gene, I'm gotta get some sleep, and I said, man, the plane's crashing on So he thought I was joking, and I had to actually slap him, I got him strapped in, and I actually slapped him, I said, man, the, I'm telling you, the plane's crashing, and then somebody said trees. And then they started hitting the trees and bah, 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 you know, then all of a sudden, the big crash. But I'm certain that he probably unsnapped his seatbelt, not knowing that we were going to crash, thinking I was still fucking with him, excuse me, uh, messing with him. And uh, can you beat that out? And uh, so I apologize for that. And uh, I tried to turn and run back to my seat, which I was riding up hill. I'll get into this a whole lot more next time because we don't have enough time to get into that. But um, my thinking was trying to get Ronnie strapped in. And then from there, it wasn't but two seconds before blackness, you know, and the, and the crash and the unconsciousness and everything. So um, up until the point, when I, I seen we wasn't going to make the field they were trying to make. When it did that, I knew we wasn't going to make it. And I, I said, now see what you've done. You're not going to make the field. And then I got caught running up. But until that point, I was still, like everybody else, thinking that we were going to have a belly landing. And then nobody knew any different in their mind until somebody said trees. And then they said trees, three seconds. If some trees, bam. So you really didn't have no time to think about not having a belly landing until you woke up, if you were lucky enough to wake up in the crash, in the scene, you know. Uh, and it was dark, and uh, then you don't know what happened, you know, because your brain stops recording from, from a horrible injury, and you know, you black out and go unconscious, your brain automatically stops recording to protect itself, protect, you know, the interior of yourself. and. Uh, if you're not knocked out and you're wide awake, then you can remember. But if you're knocked unconscious in an accident, your brain stops recording. Only starts recording again when you come to. And you, you know, your brain starts recording again. But that time between unconscious and coming to is, is, is gone. It's, it's never recorded. It's never in your brain. Now, I'm talking like a psychologist, but I'm not, you know, I'm a junkyard psychologist, but you know. But any accident, you don't remember it unless you're awake. But if you're knocked unconscious and boom, that part of your brain don't record that, you know, and that's for its own self-protection. And everybody on the plane was thinking we were going to make a better landing because that's what the pilots were telling us. Until I went up there 
you know, back and forth, back and forth, and I was the only one that did it. There's another guy that'll tell you that he was coming back and did this and he got run out, but believe me, then people sat on that plane, didn't get up. They were frozen in their seats, and I'll never forget the look on Steve Gaines' face. It's the most calm, serene look I've ever seen in my life. You know, right before we hit the ground. And uh, I have to tell that whole story in detail sometime. If people want to hear it, they may have heard enough, to, you know. But um, are we out of time? Well, it's about time. I'd like to step in for a minute, if you don't mind. Come on, it's, so, it's, it's your you house. Sit right there. It's your thank show. you for right. that, man. That was. I just want to thank you, Gene, for sharing that uh. with us, brother. And and I want to thank you for for believing in us, and we believe in you. And I think that you've got so many wonderful stories and and great inspiration and things that, that where you can give us that old school education, man. And I'm honored to have you on board and part of American Hearts Radio family. We love you, brother. I just want to say God bless you. Look, Cook, come get me gas. Let's get it. Hey, the Cook, get you gas. I, I, I name this old school for a reason, because old school. You know that that ultimate fighter stuff, that tap out stuff? Old school. No tap out. Carry them out. Carry them out. <laughs> That's a great way to do it. Well, we'll it's going to be Thursday nights. 8 o'clock p.m. It's going to be Gene Odom's Old School, and that's beginning in July. Um, so this is the first episode, so it'll be every week from now on, 8 o'clock p.m., Thursday nights. We'll see you there. It'll be right after the Awesome Alley Show, which comes on at 7, and that's on AmericanHeartsRadio.com. Click on the web TV show. Boom. We go on. Boom. We'll see you next week. See you next week. Hi, my name is Scott Hill at American Hearts Radio. Big shout out to these guys. They also donated this guitar for the Jimmy Van Zant Hope for Life Freedom concert that we're having. And uh, glad to be a, a part of that as a promoter. Uh, the family called me up and uh, asked me to help out. And uh, I called up my good friend, Gene, Gene Odom. And uh, we just booked the date today, August the 16th. I think Gene done a pretty good job of telling you uh, what's going on on that and it's just a blessing to be here and uh, but the bottom line this is all about Jimmy Van Zandt uh, we don't have we're not here for drama and, and or be to put our name in the spotlight we're here to draw calls to Jimmy Van Zandt and uh, this liver transplant and uh, you know just uh, give with your hearts and keep him in your prayers and that's all it's about thank you very much Serving Atlanta since 1998, Massey Gutters understands the challenges specific to our area. Massey Gutters is familiar with all aspects of gutters and roofing. We use only the highest quality materials with our fully trained and professional staff. You are guaranteed to get quality service and work. References available upon request. Call us today for a free estimate, 404-314-6800. Again, that's 404-314-6800. Call Massey Gutters today. 404-314-6800. Robbers! And 
2000. The rest of our time will see you next Saturday. Watch it. American Hearts Radio wants you to be a part of our family. Affordable rates, live worldwide radio broadcasts, live events and web TV show productions. Tune in, you'll like what you hear. Download our apps from Nobex for Android and Blackberry. We also have apps for Android on Google Play. It's also available on the iPhone and iPad stores. We honor our US troops, veterans, first responders, MIAs, and POWs. We are family oriented, bringing the hearts of America together by streaming live radio and web TV shows from coast to coast, supporting independent artists and spinning timeless music. We will create commercials for your business that will be placed on live radio shows and web TV daily spins and reruns, as well as creating the graphics that will appear on all social networks and our website. As a supporter of our radio web TV network, you will be invited on our local web TV shows in Atlanta, Georgia to promote your business. You will also receive free tickets to any other live event that American Hearts Radio LLC produces. In comparison to traditional advertising, our rates are very affordable and offer a larger audience. Every client's advertising plan should include a way to drive potential buyers to your website and AmericanHeartsRadio.com does exactly that. Be a part of our family bringing the hearts of America together. Please contact us. We thank you for your support. Become a part of our family of supporters today. Call 904-229-8150. That's 904-229-8150. Call today at 904-229-8150. 
1-800-273-8850. Please visit us at www.americanheartsradio.com.